Hi, hello, welcome and welcome back to another episode on your favorite Little Sla YouTube channel. So today in this video, we're going to see about the true client scripts. I mean, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you about how to add the start and end transactions because when we record the scripts, automatically every um, step will get recorded. But when we wanted to add a transaction name, we can add it through the development script. And in fact, I'll show you how does it work. And uh, yeah, uh, if you haven't watched my previous videos on how did I created my first true client script using Loadrunner, and that was a day one. And then I had uh, uh, demoed a video on how to parameterize the data using, I mean, in true client uh, using Loadrunner. And then uh, in the third video, we discussed about how to add the think time for the true client. Uh, we even did. Uh, parameterization where we are uh, substituting the value from the parameter as well. So I believe this videos would have been very useful to you. I could see a lot of views for that and a lot of likes and comments. Uh, thank you so much for that, uh, for your likes and comments. And uh, uh, now uh, in this video, we'll see about how to add the transaction names and how important is it to add the transaction names because there are like a lot of uh, uh, inputs that we give, but the, those part was not required or they were not required for uh, uh, calculating the metrics but still uh, we, there are like some transactions which we send or which triggers action to the server so those are the steps that we need to uh, record and those are the uh, transactions where we need the response time so in this video i'll show you how and how to identify and how to uh, record those uh, transactions names and yeah before we move on to this video this is me Vasan Shanmugam I welcome you all to our little slide YouTube channel please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet and uh, don't forget to join my channel and uh, share the video with your friends and yep that's it and now going back to the uh, develop script so I uh, have the scripts here and then coming back to the true client browser and then the So unlike uh, the regular uh, web uh, application recording, we don't have the option. So for example, I, I just, I'll just show you what happens. So let me just delete this one here. Yep, let me just delete this one. So uh, when I'm trying to record, so here we have the options for uh, recording. We have the options to replay. We have the options to pause, I mean, stop and uh, toggle the breakpoint. And then we can um, do undo and redo. And then here we have the open the transactions editor. So when I click on this, here we can see we can add the transactions, but not during the recording. So here we can even we have the event handler editor. And then if you want to have a screenshot, even a snapshot, we, we can even have that. But unlike uh, the web applications or SAP applications, we don't have options to uh, clearly track or clearly add the start and end transactions. I mean, even we, we can do this uh, LR start and uh, LR end transaction, but here the only option is to edit or to add them in this uh, uh, true browser window. So what I will do is, um, so, okay, let, let, let me tell you, tell you this way. So uh, these are the transactions which we were sending requests to the server. So those are the transactions where we need to uh, where we need to set up as the uh, transaction, I mean, the response time. So when you right click on it, there are like lots and lots of options. You can uh, play this step, you can play from this step, you can play until this step, and like lots of other options. We'll see them one by one, but now, and I, again, you have options to even record before this step and after this step. And for now, the part here is like you have two options. One is you can uh, right click on this transaction and then when you add start transaction let me add the transaction name which is open landing page that's my uh, first transaction and then now i want to add my end transaction so i want to add end transaction not uh, including the think time but without the think time so i just want only this uh, step one so I'll go back again to this one and then end transaction. So you can see here, uh, automatically the start transaction has come in here. So when I choose this, automatically I have started and I have ended the transaction here. So, and the reason is if you have like multiple requests and multiple uh, uh, transactions that you want to add in one single transaction, you can add that very well. So 
uh, let me show you this way. Uh, for example, um, yeah, I think this one should work. So for example, like let me remove this thing time here. Let me delete it. And then let me, okay, let, let's do this way. So I add the transaction here. Let me add the transaction this way. So zero to enter username. And this entering username has two steps. One is clicking on the username text box. So that's the first step. And then the second step is typing the username in the username text box. So I have two steps, like two steps under one transaction, right? So I click on it. And then when I add the end transaction, you can see uh, automatically the start transaction has come up here. So when I add this one, automatically this part, I mean the start and end transaction is, I mean the username, uh, clicking on the username text box and typing the username in the username text box is consolidated as one single transaction. So let's, uh, we can do like that uh, for this one as well. Uh, for the password, so let, I'm right clicking on it, select transaction, so the third part is uh, enter password, so that's going to be my third transaction, and then typing uh, the password in the password section is the third one, and then the sign-in, so sign-in is a single request, so I'm going to have it as a separate request, but for this, every time we don't need to go back to this part, uh, do start and do end. So instead what you can do is you can click on surround with transaction. So this will come up with the transaction name. So let me give the transaction name as 04. Click sign in. So this will, the, in this step, I uh, will be clicking in the sign in, symbol, uh, sign in uh, button. So now if you see here, we have got both the start and end transactions before and after the sign in step. So we have got 04 click sign in and 04 click sign in one as start and one as the end. So this is these are the some of the ways which you can try and for these are the list items I can keep it as a separate transaction. So I'm going to select surround with transaction and the name is going to be click on list item. So basically it's a different uh, name but the recorded one is list item one and then clicking on new transfer link. So same same thing I'm going to do. I'm going to surround it with transaction. So it's going to be uh, 06 and click new transfer or we can even uh, uh, make it like open new transfer page. And then same applies to the other element like clicking on the element. So I'm going to add that surround transaction 07 click element and uh, okay I think it's not uh, created properly so it's 07 click element and entering okay so now I have got the start and end transaction before and after the elements and now click on loans so let me add a transaction for that as well so click loans or open loans page so that's the right name for this open loans page so when we click on this link automatically that will open the uh, loans page so that's that that's what the actual uh, re requirement is about right so if i want to know how much time does the open load page take so that's that's the reason i'm clicking on this so uh, click on loans link and then to the double click on amount text box i'm going to surround with transaction that's going to be 09 click uh, it's okay yeah click on amount click on amount yeah I again this one yeah so what I do is I click on the amount and then I type the loan amount so what I'm going to do is I can just I can drag and drop it inside it so now uh, sorry uh, loan amount should go inside right yeah let's um Okay, I think it, it it has an option to go inside. Yeah, so it looks like it does not have option to go inside. So what I will do is I'm going to, uh, so okay, uh, I want to delete my end transaction for this. So how can I delete my end transaction? So I ha I, I'm okay, I'm fine with having the start transaction before uh, clicking on amount. So now if I want to delete my end transaction, so I'm just going to select this one. And then uh, coming back to this part here. So if you see, um, we can select the
the step so we don't need to delete you can just select it for example here i have uh, made the end transaction after the uh, the step which is clicking on a more text box and now what i'm going to do is i mean double click on uh, more text box so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the end point so i'm going to choose the next step here so type loan amount so now if you see the loan amount has come inside right so this is another way so these i mean like the true client is it has actually brought lots and lots of benefits like it, it has like it, it makes wonder if you if you really see and uh, one more thing is like if you're someone who is interested to learn about chatbot testing uh, using load runner so i'm conducting a training session on the second week of second weekend of september 14 and 15 so please do enroll yourself and you can uh, understand about load runner and how to do the chatbot testing from end to end using load runner yeah and for now yeah i think uh, so now we have got uh, click on amount uh, where we have got double clicking on the amount text box and then we have typed loan amount in the amount text box and there's one more waiting thing time which is not required so i have deleted it and i i believe i think we even we need to have the enter amount inside this one so again to do that so i'm clicking on one of the transaction and then coming to the transactions and let me select this part so if you see there is a pencil one where i can edit the transaction so when i click on that part i get this window and then i'm going to add the next step as well so that is uh pressing enter key on amount text box and i believe uh let me uh minimize this one i believe we don't need a think time in bit inside this so let me delete it so now we have clicking on double clicking on amount text box where we are selecting the text box and then we are typing the loan amount and then we are pressing the enter key so with that the amount transaction will get over and then the next one which is um, 10 underscore click on button so that's going to be my 10th transaction and then finally one more last element so I, I can just keep it as like 11th it's going to be end or close transaction so that's going to be my last last one yep so with that i believe i have um, showed you how to use the transactions the start transactions the end transactions and if i want to make any editing click on the transactions and then under that you can see the transactions window where you can uh, edit as well so in fact if you want to add any transactions if you want to create any new transactions you can do this as well from here so in the next video we'll see uh, how to create a new transaction starting and ending on this step so that will be more interesting for you. And uh, like I told you, uh, if you are interested in learning about performance testing using Loadrunner, if you want to learn about chatbot testing using Loadrunner, please do enroll my, to my training, which is happening on September 14th and 15th. And um, you can learn a lot. You can uh, do a boot camp. You can try, you can try along with me, uh, whatever uh, queries you have. And that will be more interactive and more inter interesting as well. So yeah, until I meet uh, you in another interesting video, it's bye-bye from us in Shemukam and your favorite Little Slime YouTube channel. Take care and bye-bye.